Okay, welcome to part two of this video tutorial on the basics of Final Cut Pro. Uh, this, the first video just showed the basics of the software and how to do some quick editing. Uh, this second part is going to go into some more of the advanced features of Final Cut, such as adding text, adding music, adding effects, and finally exporting your video. Okay. So let's go ahead and add some text. If I go over to this panel of icons here and click on the text function or the titles function, it'll open up the titles browser and you'll be able to see a number of different titles there for use by Final Cut Pro. Um, some are more animated than others, but you can go ahead there, just drag the cursor over each of them to see what they do and find one that suits you. I'm going to go for something a little bit more simple. Okay, there's a number of ways I can add this to my film. I can click and drag it over the film itself, and were I to do that, you'll see that the titles will then pop up actually over the top of your footage. I don't want to do that. I want to add uh, separate titles to the footage. So if I, I can just click that and drag it here physically onto the timeline, and that will then exist as a separate piece of footage, just the white titles on a black background. Okay, I can click and drag that if I want to make it shorter. Okay, and once that's on there, if I highlight that clip, I can then grab those titles, move them around the frame. Uh, if I double click, I can change the titles. I'm going to call my film The Corridor. Okay. So, so far that is looking okay, but I might want to change the font. I might want to change the size of the font. So to do that, I need to open up this inspector window by clicking on this button over here. The inspector window is great for fine tuning anything in Final Cut Pro, not just text, but sound and video as well. So once I'm in here, if I can click on the text tab, you can see there I can also manipulate the words through that function there, I can change the font, make mine a little bit larger and more dramatic. Uh, I can change the size. I also want to change the color. So I can go up here to title um, and I want to change the face color. I'm going to make it red. All right, you can see it's also got an outline color. Turn that off and a glow color. And I can manipulate all of those things here. All right, well, I'm happy with that. Just gonna play it and see what it looks like. All right, next I wanna add a little bit of music to my film. So I will go over here to the music and sound browser and you'll see that the Final Cut has a number of free to use uh, sound effects and music in there. Um, if you're wanting to incorporate your own music, you would want to import that as an MP3 and you would import that as you would any other piece of footage. So I can go up to here, uh, file, import, media, and find that MP3 wherever it sits on your computer. Okay, I'm gonna go down here. Jingles has a number of different songs that you can use. And you can just sample them if just by highlighting them and clicking on the play button. Okay, and you can see that there's there's lots to use. I'm gonna try I want something a bit darker, so I'm gonna try the Borealis sound by and I can just click and drag that here onto my timeline. Okay. And I can manipulate that the same way that I do the film. So you can see that the film exists on a separate on a separate plane on the timeline there. The film is represented by these blue colors and the sound by this green color, okay? And it's the same as, as, as chopping the film. If I wanna cut that because that music goes for longer than the film itself, I can just select the razor blade tool. Again, keyboard shortcut is B and I can just snip that off there, select with A, and just delete that. You'll also notice that that 
music down the bottom there was replaced in the video timeline just with some slug, just some black film there. So I wanna make sure that I get rid of that as well. Otherwise I'll have a long piece of black nothing at the end of my film. Okay, the other way to manipulate sound, the same way that I showed you earlier with the, the, the video, um, you've got this uh, volume adjust black line here and it's just a matter of clicking and dragging that up and down to get the right volume of your sound. You'll notice that if you raise that up too much, you're gonna get these yellow and red peaks at the tops of your sound. Uh, that means it's probably gonna get a little bit too loud, a little bit too distorted. So you wanna try and keep it lower than that. All right, you can also adjust this up here in the inspector window. If you click on the sound, you can see that, that I can adjust the volume from there. Okay. Another thing that you can do is if you run the cursor over the end of those of that sound bite there, you'll notice that you get this fade button appear. And I can click and drag that. And it'll create a, a, an arc, a sound arc. So it'll fade in from silence. And it, it can work really well if you've, if you've chopped something off rather than it just ending abruptly you can fade it out. It's gonna sound a lot smoother. Okay, uh, I wanna add some effects to my film. I wanna make it look a little bit perhaps darker or older. Um, highlight the clip that you want to change and go over here to your effects browser. And you'll see again, uh, there's a number that you can choose from you can just run the cursor over the top of each of those and see what they're going to look like. So you can change the color, you can change the light, um, you can add some pretty dramatic looking effects. I wanna make mine look darker or perhaps older. I think I might just add a sepia tone to it. So I can just grab that effect and drag it over my film and it'll apply that effect. If you wanna fine tune that effect, you can do that up here in the inspector window and do it to my whole film and see how that looks. Okay, um, finally I want to, hap uh, I, I'm happy with my film, I'm happy with the way it looks, so I want to export it as a movie file. I may have just check a fade out on the end there and I want to share this as a movie file. I can go over here to this button here which is the share button and if I click on that I'm going to be given a number of different options of how to share my film. Uh, you can export it for YouTube, you can export it for Facebook, you can export it for different Apple devices or DVD. Um, if you select the master file, you have a bit more range as to how to share your file. So it'll open up this window here. Uh, it'll tell you what the specifics of your video are. And down the bottom here in the bottom corner, you'll see a little gray box and that'll tell you how big the estimated file size is gonna be. Okay, uh, 45.2 for my purposes might be too big. So I can go over here into settings and just change some of those options, change the video codec. If I wanted to make it a higher resolution, um, I could choose something a little bit stronger. All right, you can see that that's, that's up the, the estimated file size to 692 meg. So I'll drag it back down. Okay, I'll, ultimately the smaller file sizes are gonna give you a lower resolution, but whatever suits your purposes. When I'm happy with that, click next. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. I'm going to call it film. I'm going to click save. I'm going to replace a film that I've already got on my desktop. That is currently sharing, but it's not complete. You won't know that it's complete until, if I turn on background tasks here, oh, there it goes. Once it's completed, it'll pop up and you'll get this little notification from the from the OS telling you that your share was successful